Welcome to the Mad Skills series on performance debugging. In this episode, we'll focus on SysTrace, which is a super useful tool that lets you collect and examine timing information for everything that's happening on your device. You can use this information to understand what your app is doing and when, so you can see when things are taking longer than you'd expect, or how all of the different pieces of work your app is doing relate to each other. And with this information, it's a lot easier to identify and potentially root cause performance issues. We'll go over how to collect a SysTrace recording in two different ways. You can start the recording directly from your device, or you can use Android Studio's UI. We'll demonstrate how to open your trace in Android Studio, and then we'll walk through the SysTrace UI and how to navigate around your trace recording. Last, we'll demonstrate how to add custom trace points in your app's code. So let's jump in. Here, we have our trusty Google I.O. schedule app open in Android Studio, and I've gone ahead and full screened the profiler to give us as much screen real estate as we can get. So first, I'll show you how to collect a trace from an app if you want to start the trace right at App Startup. There's a special trick to it. So, click on the Edit Configurations button for that app, and then click over to the Profiling tab. You'll see a Start This Recording on Startup checkbox. Click that, and since we're looking for a SysTrace, you'll want to select CPU Activity and Trace System Calls. Then apply and click OK. Now to actually start that trace, don't forget to click the Profile button instead of the Run button in these icons up top here. So now the app is started and we're collecting the trace. You can see that the CPU section is already shaded, indicating the trace is being recorded. I'll click Stop to save this trace section, and after a bit of parsing, here's the trace we collect. If you don't need to collect an app startup trace, you can also start and stop the trace while an app is in a profiling session at any time. So we're in one right now. Let's go back to the profiling session we have open and try that out. In general, we'll want to click on the CPU section to take a CPU trace. Again, click on System Trace Recording and click Record. You can see the CPU row is shaded again, and you can actually also see uh, pink dots representing touches when I touch the screen. Again, I'll click Stop and we can see the trace here. The last method we use to collect traces is directly on your device. And this can really come in handy if you notice something weird when you're out and about and you aren't plugged into your computer. So on your device, inside Developer Options, you can scroll down to the System Tracing app. It's a pretty simple UI, and the default trace categories will usually contain all the information you need for debugging. Just go ahead and tap Record Trace, navigate to the areas you'd like to trace, and then tap the persistent notification to stop your trace. Inside the System Tracing app, you can also add a Quick Settings tile so that you can conveniently start a trace at any time. Once you've collected this trace, you can share it via the on-device share sheet, access it via the Files app, or ADB pull it from Data Local Traces to your desktop and then open it in Android Studio. So now that you have this trace on your desktop, you can open it in Studio Profiler by clicking this plus button. Click Load from File, navigate to the trace, and then click Open. It'll ask you to confirm the process you're interested in focusing on. And there we are. So now, let's take a quick look at the data that's available in the trace. We'll actually go back to one of the earlier recordings so that we can go ahead and see some of those touches on the screen. In this top row, we can see the summary of user touches to the screen and which activity is focused, which can really help you get oriented in the trace. In the second row, we can see detailed display information which can be useful for debugging jank and understanding what's going on in the display pipeline of the device. In the third row, we can see the actual activity that's running on each CPU core. So these rows come in pairs, with the activity on one core on the top and then the frequency that core was running on underneath. You can see that the frequency changes as there is more or less work happening on the device. You can also see that the CPUs are running at max frequency during the app startup, which is something we do to make those startups as fast as possible. The process memory row shows exactly what it sounds like, the memory usage of your app as you use it. In this particular trace, these are mostly static after app startup, but generally speaking, you'll see them fluctuate as you make allocations and then later as garbage collection occurs. There's a row for total memory, anonymous memory, file-backed memory, and shared memory. Now here in the thread section is the most interesting part of the trace. This is where you can connect all of that earlier data to exactly what's happening in your app. 
I'll focus on the specifics of these trace points in later videos, but for now, know that each row here represents a thread inside your process, and they're divided into two sections. The narrow row at the top represents the CPU state, whether the CPU is running, doing I.O., or sleeping, and the stack slices here at the bottom describe the activity that's happening on your device. You can use WASD to move around the trace and zoom in and out, your classic gamer controls, or you can use the mouse to navigate by selecting the area in the top section of the screen that you'd like to focus on. If you select one trace point or a range of trace points and then press M, it will move the focus to your selection. And if you have an area selected like this, you can review an aggregation of your selection in this panel here on the side. So you can look at the aggregation of thread states or the longest running events during that selected area. If the trace points you want to see aren't here yet, you can always add some. So for example, let's say we want to see how long it takes to set up the nav menu. We can just switch to the code, add some calls to trace.begin section and trace.end section, and then profile the app one more time. Let's stop that recording and then go ahead and take a look inside our activity start. And there it is. And that's it for now. In upcoming episodes, we'll dig into what all of this data means and what these trace points represent and talk more about how we identify performance issues by looking at this data. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more and I'll see you in the next episode. <laughs>